Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I feel like it's been a while since I've done a kind of informational video uh, where I've just been talking and giving advice for aspiring solicitors. I think a lot of my content recently has been vlogs and showing an insight into my life. So I'm kind of happy that I'm going back to that informational side of things. And today we're going to be talking about the situational judgment test. So as you know, your girl loves a little bit of structure. So firstly, I'm going to define what situational judgment tests are. I'm going to refer to them as SJTs for the rest of this video because I'm lazy. The second part of the video is where I'm going to be talking about my experiences with the situational judgment test, just so you gain an idea of the structure and the different types of questions you could be asked. Then I'm going to go on to how you can prepare for situational judgment tests. And then lastly, we'll be talking about how to perform at your best while you're actually in the test itself. Firstly, let's actually define what an SJT is. So let's break down that name. Situational obviously refers to the whole kind of situation element. You'll be presented with a scenario or a particular situation. And this is most likely going to be a situation that you can get in the workplace or something that you'd come across in your day-to-day -day life as a potential trainee solicitor. So the judgment part of that name essentially tests how you would react to those situations that arise. Now let's move on to my experiences with the situational judgment test. So I believe my first SJT was actually in some kind of video game structure. So what you would do is you'd enter this virtual portal and then you would act like you are walking through the office of the firm. And while you're walking, you'll come across certain tasks or you have to do certain things. Like it's as if you're spending a day in the life in their office. So as the video game progresses, the day goes on. So you're going from the morning to lunchtime to the afternoon to even like a social in the evening. And as I mentioned along the way, as you progress throughout the day, you are faced with certain situations or scenarios. So they could be things like you've entered a client meeting at 2 p.m. and you are aware that the associate in your team is giving information that may not be correct. What would you do in that situation? So in that situation, for example, you don't want to undermine your associate in front of the client. So one option they could give you in that scenario is that you offer to take a five minute break so then you're able to discuss that with your associate outside of the room. Another situation that you could come across during the day is the supervisor has given you a task, you have no idea where to start, how to complete it, you're really confused, what would you do in that situation? And usually in the SJT when that scenario or situation arises usually you get around three to four multiple choice questions underneath. Now these multiple choice questions can differ slightly. They may ask you, okay, pick the option that you're most likely to do out of these options. So then you would select the one that you're most likely to do. Conversely, you can get the option of which of these options would you least likely to do. And sometimes they may mix and match those questions. So do read the question carefully. Sometimes they may ask for most likely, sometimes they may ask for least likely. Or conversely, you could be given those multiple choice options again, so one to four, and they ask you to label, okay, which one are you most likely to do? You'd label that as one, uh, the one that you are kind of close to do but you may not do as much as the other one, you'd label that too. And the one that you're least likely to do, you'll label that as four. So essentially you're ranking the different options up, so one to four, or you could even be like one to five, one to six. It depends on the firm and you know how their structure is like because I do feel like firms have different situational judgment tests that they tailor to their organization. So a lot of what I'm saying here is from a very generalized point of view. Another SJT that I've come across is you are in a kind of virtual portal again it's as if you are the training solicitor logging in for the day and you check your inbox and in that inbox there is a list of emails so some of these emails are things like signing up for a social or one email may be marked as urgent you have to complete this straight away that kind of thing so you are essentially expected to put in order which emails would you reply to first and which ones would you save for last so obviously using common sense here with the example that I've used what the one that says urgent you're more likely to do that one first compared to the one about the social which can afford to wait for a couple of hours or a couple of days. Now other forms of situational judgment that can arise throughout the application process is actually in the interview itself. So you may actually find yourself in an interview scenario where an individual is interviewing you and giving you scenario based questions. So they are essentially saying okay 
Imagine you are a trainee of this firm. This has happened, this has happened. How would you react? What would you do? So those are the kind of questions that you can get later on in the application process as well. Of course, that eliminates the whole multiple choice aspect of it because you are actually expected to give a whole rounded answer about what you would most likely do, why would you do it, and how would you ensure the situation is solved. One example of one that I had, I think I may have talked about this in one of my old videos actually about I think it was the video on the most difficult interview questions I've ever had. If it is, I'll tag it up in the cards above. And essentially, I was asked an ethical question of, say, if you've accidentally read the other side's uh, letter and it really benefits your client, but it was actually information that you weren't supposed to gain, what would you do in that situation? And I knew nothing about the SRA code of conduct at that moment, so I actually answered that scenario-based question wrong. I remember the, the interviewer, he raised his eyes like, okay what you're saying is completely unethical right now i thought basically it was in the client's best interests to read the letter and use it obviously you're not allowed to do that so i was uh, obviously acting unethically there but it just goes to show that you can get situations come up from the whole range of the legal field not only in the workplace but also your ethics so this ties in really nicely into how to prepare for sjts i would say first of all it's really important to memorize and familiarize yourself with the firm's culture and values. There are different ways of finding out about the firm's culture and what they believe in, what their ethos is. Now the first way involves going onto the firm's website, go on the firm's website and usually sometimes they may actually spell it out to you on the website within the career section. Okay this is the five qualities that we are looking for in a trainee solicitor or sometimes they may not have that as obviously stated on their website so what you can do instead is look at the section like who we are and essentially in that section you can pick out key words so say if they use things like forward thinking or we are innovative or we are hard-working individuals then that gives you an idea as to what kind of people they take on and what kind of qualities they look for in their future talent. So by understanding a firm's culture, you get a little bit of an idea about what they're looking for in candidates. And this is something that you can bear in mind when doing the SJT. For example, say if they're looking for trainees who take initiative, you can keep that in mind when you're doing the SJT because there may be certain multiple choice questions that allow you to show that you are also someone who would take initiative in a certain scenario. Another way in which you can prepare is honestly generally just try and think of situations that have happened to you in the workplace, how have you reacted to it. Of course, everyone's had positives and negatives no matter where they've worked. And it's really important to think about those general circumstances that do arise when you are working. Also try and think about those situations that can come up for solicitors directly. So this is what I'm talking about here in terms of the SRA code of conduct. This is what I'm talking about in terms of client contact. Let me give you a couple of more examples. Say if you're talking to a client and they really don't understand what you're saying, what would you do in that situation? How would you react? Or if you're working on a project in a team and you realize that there's a new way of doing something, some of the multiple choice question uh, options could come up and in terms of don't do nothing in that scenario the team don't want to hear your opinions obviously that's something that you would least likely do or you can say something in that situation like contribute to the team and make sure that your voice is heard or you can say shout over everyone and make sure that everyone hears your idea of course that's also something that you're least likely to do in that situation so obviously I think when it comes to answering these questions sometimes like the example that I've given it's good to give that middle ground or that balance you don't want to be that person who doesn't do anything who's really kind of inactive but you also don't want to be that person who takes control and you know just acts really dominant and aggressive in a situation another common SJT question that I've come across quite often is you're in a situation where you're managing multiple deadlines and a partner comes in and they just said Sim I need you to drop everything right now we're going to court that kind of thing so when you are faced in situations like that what would you do and here is when say if the firm values things like teamwork that's when you can really show your team working skills here and show that you can rely on your other team members to maybe do some of the tasks or delegate some of the opportunities. If they're looking for leadership skills, delegation comes within that as well because you're able to organize tasks around, tell people to do certain things that match up to their strengths or their expertise. So again, just giving you a bit of a flavor as to what you could be tested on. As mentioned before, please do look at the SRA code of conduct. It tells you a lot about things like how to act with integrity, how to deal 
deal with confidentiality or disclosing documents or information to clients and I think those situations they tend to be a little bit tricky for individuals who may not have done the LPC and they are doing an SJT test so I would really look into things like that as well because I do get a few questions that come up in SJTs that are based on the ethical perspective as well and of course the next thing about how to prepare I think you guys are going to be doing this anyway is googling and researching practice tests that are out there and I think it's really important to not only limit yourself to say legal questions that could come up or legal SJTs if you do search for just general workplace situational judgment questions it may not be specifically linked to the legal field however I think it gives you a general idea as to just professional life in an SJT you're not going to be faced with scenarios that you come across very often so if you're doing general SJT practice just knowing and familiarizing yourself with the certain questions that could come up from a general perspective you're still giving yourself that element of surprise and allowing yourself to think about how you'd react in certain situations so don't try and limit yourself to just finding out practice questions for the legal field. I'm sure there are others out there that are just about working in the workplace in general. Now, the last section I'd like to talk about is how to perform at your best in the SJT itself. Now, I cannot stress enough how important it is to be honest in your SJT. It may seem very tempting to act like someone you're not, but one thing that I've definitely come to realize is everyone has some kind of assumption of what corporate law or a corporate lawyer looks like. And the times when I've tried to act like that ideal that I think firms are looking for, I am never successful. And then there was a moment in the process where I decided to just be my authentic self. And that's when I started seeing a lot more success, getting through to the next stage, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of the time, say if the SJT doesn't go well, and you acted like your natural self, that can be a blessing in disguise because it just goes to show that yourself and the culture of the firm may not match. And I think it's very, very important to have that alignment in values and goals with your employer, with your organization that you're working for. On the flip side, if you decide, okay, I don't want to act like myself here, I'm going to act like this corporate individual, you may actually get rejected because they didn't like that image that you created of yourself. And they would have maybe actually preferred that you be your natural self. So I always erred on the side of just trying to stay as honest as I could when answering these questions because and the worst thing would be is in a multiple choice question, taking an option and actually thinking, oh, you know what? I don't think I'd actually do this, but I think that's what they want to see in me. So I'm going to take that. I don't know, that doesn't really sit well with me. So do try and avoid that aspect. Also, time management is so key in the situational judgment test. Usually when I was in the test itself, they had a timer in the corner of the screen anyway. But if they don't, I think it's really important to understand how many questions you're going to be asked, how long you have to do it. So you're able to time how long you're going to spend per question. Is it going to be two minutes per question or what? So try and figure that out before you sit the test. Time management is really key because the worst thing is, is you find a question really hard and you spend ages on it. And then the questions that come afterwards, they're easier than the ones before, but you just spent so much time on the harder question that you lost marks on the easier ones that you were more certain of. So yeah, try and be strict with yourself with the timings, I think is very important. Another thing I did in SJTs was I kept a bullet point post-it note in front of me, very brief on all the qualities and culture that the firm had, what they promoted, what they believed in. Albeit this is something that I didn't want to kind of affect my performance, it was just nice to keep Keep that there just to kind of keep in my mind essentially that this is what the firm is looking for and it just acted as a bit of a reminder in that sense as well. Now if you are in a kind of situational scenario based interview so this is further on in the process one way in which I try to answer those questions of imagine you are in our real estate department and you've been given loads of work kind of thing so when you are answering questions in the actual interview itself it really helps to link the situation back to an experience that you've had. So for example, say if you are given that question of, okay, you're in our real estate department and you're absolutely snowed in with work and someone else has come in and uh, given you some more work to do, which is absolutely urgent, what would you do? 
It's really important in my opinion, and this is something that I did quite often, is I linked the situation or my actions that I would do. So one of the actions I would do is reorganize my to-do list. I would flag up or try and push back on any deadlines to my supervisor or any, any other person who's assigned me work. So I would link those kind of actions back to things I've done it before in the past when I may have been in a similar situation where I've had conflicting deadlines or I've been under pressure to complete work really fast. And it doesn't have to be a legal example, it can be non-legal, it can be personal. For example, you were managing loads of uni deadlines as well as your society commitments. The reason why I did that in terms of linking the action back to a time when I also did a similar thing in the past, I think it just added credibility to my answer. It showed genuineness, it showed the interviewer that that I had been in that kind of situation before and this is how I handled it, this is how I learned from the situation and this is how then I'm going to transfer it to the situation and then ultimately it's what I would do if I was a trainee solicitor at your firm. So yeah, I think that's what I would say in terms of situational judgment tests and briefly talked about scenario-based interviews today as well. If you liked today's video, please do like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. I've got a big one planned for my next video actually. So hopefully if all goes well, that will go up next week. And yeah, until then, see you all soon. Have a lovely week.